Hey guys, welcome to Stacking the Shelves Showcase Sunday Mailbox Monday for the weekend of April 11th. Um, I was on vacation last week, so this is kind of my book haul for the last two weeks. Um, most of these are either ebooks or audiobooks. Um, I did have a couple actual paperback, like book, book copies I got for review. Um, the first one of those is Pip Bartlett's Guide to Magical Creatures by Jackson Pierce and Maggie Stifader. Um, this looks just super cute. I got this through the Amazon Vine program. I actually already read it, and it's a pretty good read. I think um, younger kids or middle grade kids will like it. It's got little pictures from Pip's guide that he does throughout. You know, there's Pip. Um, so there's some pictures throughout. It's a pretty quick read. It was fun. There's lots of humor in here, magical creatures. So anyways, if you're interested in that, um, it comes out the end of April. So go ahead and check that out. I will have a review posting for that next week, so you can look forward to that as well, if you are excited about reviews. Um, the second book I got for review is William Shakespeare's The Phantom of Menace by Ian Dosher. Uh, this is the fourth book in the Shakespeare retelling of the Star Wars series. I actually did not know this was coming out. I have read the last three of these. Um, but, you know, it's got some cool pictures in there. Everything's done up like all Elizabethan and whatever. Uh, these always are nice, pretty funny and they're pretty quick little reads. So if you've been a fan of the other ones, um, make sure to check this one out. I'll probably read this in the next couple weeks and we'll post a review for that then. Um, the third book I got for review is the second book in the Crowning, the Crowning Key series by Clay and Susan Griffith, The Undying Legion. Um, this comes out the end of June. I actually just got the first book in this series to review, and that one comes out, releases the first week of June. So this one releases the last week of June. So they're releasing these two pretty close together. Um, the description of the first one was just so awesome. I thought, well, you know, they're offering the second one on NetGalley now, so I might as well go ahead and get it. And I've been trying really hard not to get books to review that are in later in a series I haven't started yet. But, you know... It's on, I really like the Vampire Empire series by this, this couple, so I thought, well, you know, I'll probably like it. It's supposed to be kind of a Victorian steampunk, urban fantasy type of deal. Um, they're comparing it to uh, Penny Dreadful TV series and the Iron Druid Chronicles by Kevin Hearn, two things I really enjoy. So I'm excited to read that, and hopefully it'll be a good read. All right, so I did, like, buy two books, and one of them I kind of, like, didn't buy. It was... I forget what they call it, like Kindle First or whatever. I don't know if anybody else does that, but the Kindle First, they offer you, if you're a Prime member, Amazon Prime member, you get to pick from one of four books every month that is a pre-release. Um, so I did get Boundary Crossed by Melissa F. Olson, and this is the first book in the Boundary series, and it is a new series by Melissa F. Olson. I guess she also wrote the Ur Urban Fantasy series, the first book of that was Dead Spots. I have not read anything else by her. I do remember Dead Spots coming out, and I did want to read it, but I never did. So since this is the first book in a new urban fantasy series, I thought I would check this out. Now all I really know it's a new urban fantasy series, and it was offered for free, so I went ahead and got it. Um, the other book I actually did buy, not like bought for free, <laughs> is the third book in the Steel and Stone series by Annette Marie. This is Yield the Night. This just came out last week. Um, this has been an absolutely spectacular young adult urban fantasy series. I've really, really loved it. And it's kind of an indie author, so they're published on ebook. Um, anyways, I highly recommend it if you read ebooks and you're interested in this. Um, I can't remember if she has any paperback coming out or not on it. But, anyways, I got the first two on NetGalley. Love them. So, this is the third book in that series. Yield the Night. It's an urban fantasy series in an alternate world, kind of alternate future, um, where humans interact with the reality of both heaven and hell, and they have demons that come from both of them, but they're not really heaven and hell like you would think it. They're just alternate realities that parallel the human world. So it's been a good series. Okay, so I did get a whole bunch of audiobooks. Audible has a deal going on until the end of April. They do it pretty much every April where if you buy four audiobooks or use four credits, you get a 10... Oh my gosh, my cat says hi. Um, so if you buy four audiobooks or you use four credits, 
you get a $10 credit on that. And I had quite a few audiobooks that I was going to buy over the summer. And I thought, well, I'll get them all now. And then I'll get my $10 credit that I can use to get a different audiobook later. So um, two of the ones that I, well, actually, there's three that are from audio series I have listen, been listening to on audiobook. And one of them I'm actually listening to now. I'm listening to the second book in the Grim Noir Chronicles. So I went ahead and bought the third book in that series, and that's Warbound by Larry Correa. Um, this is the third book in the Grim Noir Chronicles. This has been like an alternate history with some magic and stuff like that. Very good if you like the Monster Hunters International series, which is more of a horror urban fantasy series. <clears throat> Excuse me, urban fantasy type series he writes. I definitely recommend this series as well. Um, the first book wasn't as good, but the second book has really been really, really good, and I'm looking forward to reading this third book. Um, the next audio book I got was the third book in the Tiger's Curse series by Colleen Hua. Hua? Hook? Hook? Ha? Hook? I don't know how you say that. Um, this is Tiger's Voyage. I really love Tiger's Curse. I wasn't as crazy about the second book in the series. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and listen to the third book in the series and we'll see how it is. And if it is really good, then I'll, I'll continue on. Otherwise, I might drop it because I didn't like the second book nearly as much as the first one. But I do love the covers on these. They're pretty cool. And then the last book that I got on audio, oh, stop. He doesn't, I've got this old cat. He's 15. He doesn't like when I talk to my phone. He thinks I'm insane. So he's very, very noisy. And I apologize for him. But it, something has to happen every week with the cats. It's, they're just insane. All right. So the next book I got on audiobook that is in a series I've been reading is Blood Rock by Anthony Francis. Um, this is the second book in the Skin Dancer series. I actually listened to the first book on the series quite a while ago. This is another urban fantasy series, and it's about a tattoo artist who actually can like make her tattoos come alive when she dances and they can attack people and stuff. It was actually really well done. The audiobook was very well done. I really enjoyed it. I just never got around to listening to the second book in the series, so I went ahead and got that one as well, and that's Blood Rock by Anthony Francis. I tend to listen to a lot more audiobooks in the summer because I go biking a lot and I'll listen to them while I'm doing some of my longer bike rides. Then the final book I got over the last two weeks in the final, it's a, another audiobook and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Royale. Rowell, sorry, Rowell. I've heard a ton about this book. I actually got it from the library at one point and just had too much other stuff to read and didn't end up getting a chance to read it. So I went ahead and got this for audiobook, and this is just kind of one of these random, ooh, I've really been wanting to read that, and I needed a fourth audiobook to qualify for my $10 Audible credit. So um, I went ahead and got that, and I think that'll be a good read. So if you count that up, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, oh my gosh, seven, eight, Nine books over the last two weeks that should keep me busy. Um, I have been a little bit swamped because I, there's a lot of books coming out in March that are in series I read. I think during my last video I said it was February, but it's actually March. And so the library is kind of getting all of those in, and I've been getting them from the library. Um, there is one book that I have listed below if you are watching this on my blog, and that is Steel and Silk by Beck McMaster, which is the next novel in the London Steampunk series. I am going to pick that up from the library right after this video. Um, so I don't have that here to show you, but I did get that one this week, so it is listed on my blog as one of the books I received. Um, so yeah, that's about it. We did go on vacation. We went to um, Northern Oregon, Northern California, Southern Oregon, and like saw the redwoods and all that. It was pretty cool. Um, probably the coolest part was this Lava Beds National Memorial Park. They have all these lava tubes you can hike through. And you pretty much just get a, a flashlight and a hard hat and you go hike through them. And they tell you which ones are like really hard that you can get lost in and have to crawl through or whatever. But it was something really unique that we've never done and we really had a good time doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, the other stuff, the Redwoods are always cool. I've seen them before, but it's pretty neat. And <laughs> I was trying to explain to my husband and my son how big they are before we went there. And that's it's just kind of a weird feeling like they're really big but at the same time there's so many of them so it's like hard to comprehend how big they are so like if you took a redwood and put it in a normal forest you'd probably be like oh my god that tree is huge but when you're out there like the majority of the trees are redwoods so they just all look really big and so it's like cool but it's hard to conceive exactly how big they are even when you're standing next to it so 
I don't know. Those of you who've been out there probably know what I'm talking about. So you're like, cool. And then by the, like, the, you know, seventh time you've driven by them, you're like, yeah, they're big. Great. <laughs> so, I don't know. It was fun. It was really cold while we were out there, though. It was actually colder out there than it was here, which is a little bit unusual this time of year. Um, so while I was gone, uh, it got to 80 degrees in Minnesota one day, and then it snowed. <laughs> we got back, so it's been very up and down. Um, we are supposed to get up into the 60s this weekend, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, I know I'm babbling a lot. And then right when we got back, I uh, broke my toe on one of the weights I was lifting. I stubbed it against it, and that was awesome. So I just got back from the doctor and having my toe x-rayed. They think it's a minor fracture, and I have to wear a really stylish-looking flat, hard shoe for a couple weeks while it heals. Um, so that was fun. Get back from vacation, break your toe, you know, good things like that. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I don't have much else to say. I hope you guys had a great couple weeks. If you went on spring break or had spring break, I hope you got to do something fun or at least get some extra reading in. Um, I hope you got some great books this week, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.